2002 Mitsubishi Montero Sport with a 3.5 liter engine. Doing some field work on this one so the camera work isn't gonna be the best. Here's a shot of our trouble codes. System two lean bank two. Got an inactivity detected bank two sensor one. O2 heater circuit bank two sensor one. An O2 sensor circuit high voltage bank one sensor two. And a cylinder three misfire. The ones that we're going to address are the lean conditions on bank two and the sensor issues on bank two. Okay, I have my data pulled up. Short term fuel trim bank one and two on this side, long term fuel trim bank one and two on the right, and my four oxygen sensors. This, these two are my upstream and these two are my downstream. I'm gonna start it. See right away my bank one's at 0.9, my bank two's at zero. I just had it running so the sensors are warm. It's not uncommon to see a rich condition on initial startup. What we want to do is look at our fuel trim numbers while we're watching this O2. Still haven't seen this thing go into closed loop yet on bank two short term being at zero there it is so we're in closed loop short term command was 25 percent there for a second and the long term was 12 so a combination of those two again is our total fuel trim still running lean on bank two you see computers adding fuel still adding fuel running lean on bank two but are we really check out the downstream on the same side we're reading rich full rich on the downstream, full lean on the upstream. So right away, this is suggesting to us an O2 sensor problem. One of the things you can do is you can add propane and see if you can drive this rich being um, outside. And I don't have any propane. I'm just gonna do some rapid snaps. And what that should do, should be able to drive this O2 rich at some point in time. You saw that I was not able to do that. And again, that's really not necessary here. We have a discrepancy. There's no way our downstream is gonna be rich with our upstream lean. I've shown this on another vehicle. Right away, our lean condition codes, our O2 codes are related to a faulty bank two sensor 102. We could have a short to ground in the signal wire, pulling that voltage down. We wanna address that before we replace this O2. If you think back to our trouble codes we had, we had a bank two sensor two. Let's see, I can't remember, I gotta go back and look. Maybe it was a bank one sensor two fault. It was a O2 cir sensor circuit high voltage bank one sensor two. So this is not related to our condition. This heater circuit fault, I believe I set that in the test I'm gonna show you. We're worried about the 2-1. The one we're addressing right now for this video, stay short with this, this bank two sensor one, we're gonna, going to address, do we have a sensor problem? Do we have a lean condition? As you see the PO174, or do we have a wiring problem? Now we already addressed the system two lean. It is not a system two lean fault. You are not gonna have a rich downstream sensor with a lean upstream sensor. We have an upstream sensor problem. We do not have a lean condition on bank two. Very easily identified just sitting inside the vehicle looking at scan data. Let me pull this back up again. And you can see that right here. Bank two sensor two is full rich. Bank two sensor one is at zero volts. What I'm gonna do is run under the hood and we're gonna do some circuit integrity testing on this bank two sensor one and make sure that our harness is good before we replace that oxygen sensor. So our main concern right here is an open or short in the signal wire of the O2 sensor and that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is identify where bank two sensor one is on this vehicle and what I've done so far, which I didn't show, is I unplugged this sensor and that harness or the sensor side connector it runs down over on this side so bank two sensor one is driver side i unplugged it with the engine running and my scan data did not change it stayed at zero volts 
and my bank one sensor one, which is this one, was still operational. So I was able to identify that this is the bank two sensor one. Now going further, some theory that I teach is knowing harness side colors is gonna help you. I'm in the field right now. I don't feel like looking up a wiring diagram. And what I'm gonna do is look at the harness, or sorry, sensor side colors. And what you see hopefully here is you see two blacks to the right and a white and a blue to the left. The blue wire is the signal wire. The two blacks, when you see same color wires, that's the heater circuit. The white is the sensor ground. Those are colors that I remember. Those are colors I have listed in my book. And again, I have that there because this is gonna allow us to quickly identify the signal circuit and do the test we wanna do. So I have the signal wire T-pinned. I'm gonna unplug the sensor connector. We want the sensor out of the, out of the mix here. Our concern is with the harness. We wanna make sure from here all the way to the computer that we have no opens and shorts. The test that I'm gonna do, first of all, would be to unplug it and then look to see if we have a bias voltage. This would be section five in my book, bias voltage testing on an oxygen sensor. And what we wanna see on a lot of cars, we unplug it, we should see 450 millivolts on that. We don't have to measure it directly. We can go right to the scan data and look at the O2 signal. So with it unplugged, I'm gonna do that first, see what we got. Okay, you see on our scan tool with the sensor unplugged, we're still reading the same number, zero volts, 0.02. So what that suggests is there is no bias voltage on this circuit. I'm not familiar with Mitsubishi offhand. Apparently they don't use one. I know Ford doesn't use a bias. So we need another way to test this. The test I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch one finger to battery positive. I'm gonna touch the other finger to that T-pin and I'm gonna drive this voltage high through my body, my body being a very high ohm resistor. I'm not worried about feeding too much current flow into the circuit. So I'm gonna use my body as a resistor. Again, running battery positive through my arms into this O2 signal circuit. We'll see the result. Okay, this is gonna be a tough shot. I got the camera sitting on the battery here. I'm gonna touch battery positive with one hand. I'm touching my T-pin with the other. Watch the scan tool. The key is on, engine's off. You see voltage go to 1.275 volts, which is the most this circuit's ever designed to read. I'm sending more voltage in than that. But what this tells you is this signal circuit is not open or shorted. It is good from the sensor connector all the way to the computer. And so what we know now, we have a shorted O2 sensor, no question about it. No wiring problems, definitely needs an oxygen sensor. I'm gonna show you one more thing, and that's the voltage level on this circuit with me doing this test. Okay, so you can see what I was doing. I was just touching this T-pin with this hand, and with my other hand, I was touching battery positive right here. Now I'm gonna do the same test again with my voltmeter installed so you can see what kind of voltage we're pushing through this circuit. I've heard others claim it's only one volt through your body. That's absolutely false. It's a lot higher than that. So let's take a look. All right, here's the shot. Here's the shot using the multimeter, finger to battery positive, the other finger on the T-pin. And you see I'm sending about seven volts into this oxygen sensor circuit through my body. No, you will not hurt this O2 sensor circuit. You saw the scan tool only read 1.2. That's because it's internal programming. It's only designed to read that high a voltage, so it's not gonna interpret anything higher than that. What we, we've just done is a very, very fast signal circuit integrity test. No question about it. Bank two, sensor 102 is faulty and needs to be replaced. That's all I'm gonna do for this video. These other codes I'm not worried about. I wanted to have a good procedure on this, what I call in my book, a PCM response test. It's towards the end of section five.